Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, here with Seth again. Um, he doesn't even know himself how much he's going to commentate, and you saw probably the camera checks before this, so yeah. Um, Seth the Troll is with us this evening for an amazingly terribly dark topic. I'm not sure how long this is going to go. I don't know what kind of input he's going to do. A lot of this is... There is some planning here. A lot of this is off the cuff. And we're... I'm it's still in the book of Deuteronomy like I have been for the past several days. And today, it's Sunday, doing the full sermon. And my gosh, I found a doozy. I think I have some of the answers. I won't say that I have all of them. And a big part of this channel is I want you guys to think. I want me to think. I want my good friend Seth to think. I want all of us to think about these things, whether we understand them or not, whether we know them or not, whether we comprehend them or not. God's word is true. That's my presupposition, and I admit it's a presupposition. There's some reasoning behind that. That's a sermon for another day. And as the word of God, I can trust it. I can depend on it. I can believe it. And the parts that don't make sense are right, and my other presuppositions which contradict the Bible are wrong. And I know, actually I hope, several people who disagree with that will watch this video and perhaps think again on these verses and think about the things that I have to say about them in my commentary on them. And of course, if you just want to leave a good troll post, hit the dislike button and uh, troll away and have some fun with the stupid Christians. Heh <laughs> heh all right, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 52. Now, these are the verses atheists love to throw at Christians. They're verses pastors don't like to tell their flock. So, hey, you guys are my flock. All right now, 11 of you. Thank you, Seth, for being one of them. Greatly appreciated. Actually, I unsubscribed a couple days ago. Doggone it. It's all right. Well, whoever those 11 are, then thank you very much. You're much better than this guy right here. No, I'm just kidding. I was just trolling you. <laughs> now, let's talk about women eating their children. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 52. Let's see that be talked about in a church. Makes me hungry. Let's see that be said in a church. They shall besiege you at all your gates until your high and fortified walls in which you trust come down throughout all your land and they shall besiege you at all your gates throughout all your land which the Lord your God has given you you shall eat the fruit of your own body the flesh of your sons and your daughters whom the Lord your God has given you in the siege and desperate straits in which your enemy shall distress you the sensitive and very refined man among you will be hostile toward his brother toward the wife of his bosom and toward the rest of his children whom he leaves behind, so that he will not give any of them the flesh of his children whom he will eat, because he has nothing left in the siege and desperate straits in which your enemy shall distress you at all your gates. The tender and delicate woman among you who would not venture to set the sole of her foot on the ground because of her delicateness and sensitivity will refuse to the husband of her bosom and to her son and her daughter her placenta, which comes out from between her feet, and her children whom she bears. For she will eat them secretly, for lack of everything in the siege and desperate straits in which your enemy shall distress you at all your gates. I have not once in, and I'm old, I've said I'm in my 30s, I'm specifically 35, became a Christian at 13, so that is 25, 15, yet yeah, in 22 years of Christianity, I haven't heard a single sermon on these verses. I've heard about God's wrath. I've heard about God's curses. I've heard about God's fierceness. And I've heard about the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. And that is biblical. It's in the book of Proverbs. I've ne never heard about um, sensitive men and delicate women hiding the children they've killed to eat from the rest of their family because the siege is so bad and so terrible that they simply won't share with their spouse and their other children and now you're hearing that sermon today you are you're hearing you're maybe not the best informed guy but you are hearing it from a guy who believes in the word of god you're hearing it from a guy who believes he can provide some answer to this now first off right off the bat i want to leave hell i didn't set the timer yay me 
right off the bat, I actually want to leave hell aside. I think all of us would agree that hell is the most extreme and extraordinary of all punishments. And it could easily be argued if a God is willing to send you to eternal punishment in fire and brimstone forever and ever and ever and ever with no um, relief, with no, with no end in sight, this really isn't so bad in comparison. I actually want to set that aside. I want to set that aside for another sermon at another time. These are, I talked about it the other day. I talked about the blessings and the curses of the Lord, how there seem to be a lot more curses then there were blessings. And it's actually all contained within Deuteronomy chapter 28. It's a chapter of 68 verses. Usually I read one chapter a day. This time I read this chapter in two parts because it was such a long chapter. So for those of you Christians who want to blast me for not reading the entire chapter, feel free. I have a long way to go in my Christian walk. I'll admit that right off the bat. Maybe I didn't put in as much effort that day as I should have. Although I will like to, I would like to add to that that chapters and verses were something added to the Bible 1,500 years after its inception and writing. With that in mind, these are some harsh verses. Leaving hell aside, these are some incredibly harsh verses. The wrath of God is apparently very, very real and very, very harsh. Things can get really bad if you don't serve the Lord, if you don't fear Him, if you don't obey His commandments. If you are not blessed and you disobey Him and you walk the line of being cursed, it's interesting, this chapter, the curses get worse and worse and worse and worse. And I want, there are actually, there's a, I think there's one, there's one or two more paragraphs after that one. It doesn't say anything that, it doesn't say anything that specific. In that detail. So I wanted to focus on what I personally considered the worst part of this chapter. By all means, please read it for yourself. Again, encouraging thought, encouraging the reading of the Word of God. Read the whole chapter for yourself. Set aside 15, 20 minutes and read um, some of the, just a small chunk of the wonderful and a big portion of the terrible things that can happen for disobeying and obeying the Lord God. Can a God, now the bottom line here, I'm going to skip straight into the meat of this. Can a God that would sick one family member against another be considered just and loving? Is that even a fair statement? Um, Yeah, you're blessed if you obey him, but you're cursed, 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 cursed if you don't obey him. There's a really heavy emphasis on the curses there. I believe the entire Bible is the word of God. I believe that all the men who wrote and the women who wrote this I'm not sure what, I'm not, some of the authors are undetermined. There could be some women in there. Very, very possible. Since I believe the whole thing was written by the Word of God, or written by God and the whole thing is the Word of God, I'm going to take a few things outside of the books of Moses to put in context the Lord God that is being talked about here. I don't think that's inappropriate. I don't think that's wrong. I am not a uh, Sadducee, so I will use the rest of the Word of God in a, um, as well as the first five books. So the first place I'm going to turn to is going to be in the book of Lamentations. Now you want another really downer part of the Word of God. You want a place that will just rip your heart out, throw it in the wall, you know, maybe drive a few nails through it, and then find the nearest trash bin and chuck it in there. Lamentations is the book for you. It is after the Lord has completely destroyed Jerusalem, First, at one point, Israel was one nation. Then after Solomon, the nation split into Israel and Judah. Israel didn't have a single righteous king. They they were destroyed. Judah had several righteous kings, but near the end, there were several unrighteous kings, and it eventually was also destroyed. If you want to see God's thoughts on the destruction of those nations and how he felt about divorcing, essentially, Israel... Read Ezekiel 23. I'm going to reference Ezekiel later. And Ezekiel 23, again, another incredibly graphic chapter, a very sexually explicit chapter in the Word of God. Read it. It's there. Never heard it preached from the pulpit, but it is in there. I do believe it. As a Christian, if you claim to be a Christian and you claim the Word of God, it's part of what you're claiming. If you didn't know, now you do. I'm going to focus on a few very specific points and lamentations that I believe reveal the heart of God. 
There's a lot of judgment. There's a lot of curses. However, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. If uh, any of the old-time Baptists and other old-time denominations um, are hearing this, those verses just brought to mind a lot of hymns, a lot of good old-time hymns. Continuing with verse 25, The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. I'm going to skip down to verse 31. By all means, read the verses in between, if you think I'm taking this out of context. For the Lord will not cast off forever, though he causes grief. Yet he will show compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he does not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. The bottom line is this, and this may answer my question the other day, why was the blessing part so quick? Why did he focus so much on the curses and the fear and the horrible things that could happen and not the blessing? You know, we love to focus on the blessing as Christians. We love to focus, pastors particularly, the televangelists in particular, <laughs> love to focus on the blessing and the gain and the prosperity that comes from knowing the Lord. They don't talk about this other stuff. It doesn't sell. <laughs> exactly. A lot of these things aren't popular. The justice, the judgment of the Lord is not a popular topic, and it needs to be. Without going too deep into it, because I don't feel like it's the crux of the message, I do not believe that judgment is an Old Testament thing. I do not believe the things that I just read <clears throat> are limited to the Old Testament times. And some pastors would probably disagree with that. <clears throat> some pastors would even say that the wrath of God was completely satisfied in Jesus Christ and that that doesn't apply to us anymore. I do not agree with that. The God of the New Testament killed Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5 for lying to the Holy Spirit. The God of the New Testament killed King Herod for not giving glory to God. And King Herod was eaten by worms and died. That's a fairly gruesome death. Now, I forget which chapter in Acts it is. It's sometime after chapter 5 with Ananias and Sapphira. Google is your friend, as I have often said and will often say. Uh, you don't even need Strong's Concordance anymore. With the internet, you can find whatever you want. The Bible is the most popular book and still the bestseller on the market. So it's very easily accessible in many versions and translations. I think part of the reason that God focuses a lot on the judgment and focuses so little on the blessing is because very simply, he doesn't afflict willingly. That's not what he wants to do. It's kind of like what I said in the, in the short message. You obey him, you prosper. If you commit this, 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 this sin, then you're cursed. Then you're under his judgment. There's one way to follow him. Love him and obey. Another popular hymn, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. There's a lot of truth in that hymn. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. It's another verse. Look it up. I'm not going to provide that one for you. Look it up. Do a little bit of reef search. The blessing is so simple. The curse is a lot more complicated because there are so many ways to disobey. Obedience and blessing are very simple. You obey him and you love him. And if you love him, you will obey him. You'll want to obey him. He's kind of a cool guy. Just a little bit. Just a tad. And I know that the answer is not going to satisfy a lot of you. It may not satisfy any of you. Truthfully, it doesn't completely satisfy me. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not here trying to say I have all the answers. I'm saying I feel like I have some. I feel like I'm like on the cusp of finding something great. And I'm just taking you guys along for the ride. I still want to figure some of this stuff out too. And I don't get it all. That's I, true. It is. <laughs> Troll statement or not, that is very, very true. And, and I'm okay with that because 
None of us are going to have it all in this life. Even the smartest human being alive doesn't even have 1% of the sum total of human knowledge. So I'm very content in saying, yeah, I don't get it all. Not even the thing that I love the most, study the most, care about the most, even more than video games. Like I've said, Jesus is number one, video games are number two, family and friends and job are number three. So this book is number one. This book is right here at the top of my list. And he doesn't willingly afflict. I'm also going to turn to Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 23. Yeah, I'm old-fashioned. I, I use a book. I don't use my phone. Go men that side. Or the uh, you know monitor right in front of your face. <laughs> yep. You added so much to this, Seth. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Yeah, just helping out, you know. That's what friends are for. That's what your brothers and sisters in Christ are for. I actually think it's right there. Is, <laughs> and I'm going to read it out of here. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should turn from his ways and live? Skipping down to verse 32. But again, by all means, read the whole chapter. Don't let me take anything out of context. Look behind me. For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn and live. In Lamentations, God does not willingly afflict. He doesn't willingly grieve the sons of men. In fact, even in his wrath, he didn't wholly consume them. There are Jews to this day. There's a whole nation set aside for them. In 1948, the nation of Israel, after about 2,000 years, was reborn. And the Jews are in control of it. For the time being. And that's a topic we also won't get into at the moment. But they're still here. They're still alive. God has not utterly cast them off. Quick segue as a side note. To any of my Jewish friends who are watching this, I don't know what you've heard. I don't know what's been said to you. But on behalf of a lot of the Christian community, I want to apologize to you for some of the treatment that some of my brothers and sisters have said and some of the things that they have put forth. God definitely still loves you. He is definitely still for you. The, New, the Old Testament is definitely still correct. And I am I certainly do not hate you, and I apologize on behalf of probably people that have no, have no desire to apologize. Nonetheless, I am apologizing on behalf of the Christian community because we, there is no right for a guy who worships a Jew to have any anti-Semitism in him. So I'm for you. I love you. And I'd like to welcome you into a community that believes the Messiah has come, that he's here, that he wants the very best for you, that he's still made a way for you. He has not utterly cast you off. I just wanted to throw that in there because, I don't know, it just that it kind of like burst up from within my heart. They're like, this is important. I need to say this. I second that, by the way. So, yeah, um, you guys are very much so loved, at least by two Christians out there. Two of, two of us think you guys are awesome and that God loves you. Yay, Internet. And two guys yep. on a webcam. That will be a fun <laughs> conversation for another video, by the way. Absolutely. God didn't utterly destroy them. And despite all the faults of the church, God hasn't utterly cast us aside. Because he doesn't. He will punish on a large scale, and he will take the life of some who are in complete disobedience to him. But God desires mercy more than anything else. He desires, and he desires righteousness from the inward man, and he has provided that through the cross of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus came. He came to fulfill the things that we could not fulfill. And even though I believe God's wrath and fierceness can be poured out on us today, I would like to extend an invitation on behalf of my Lord Jesus that you do not have to suffer the wrath of God. You do not have to suffer the fierceness of God. If you will accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, He will take away all of that fierceness, all of that wrath, if you will love, trust, and obey Him. He came to this world, lived a perfect life, born of a virgin. He died on the cross, shedding his blood for the forgiveness of all of our sins. And he rose again from the third day to guarantee eternal life for any and all who will call on his name. That's why he came. The ultimate extension of God's love and God's righteousness. He came in the form of one of us, one of his creation. And he let us nail him to that cross. 
so that the wrath and the judgment of God could be placed on him, so that we wouldn't have to face it, so that there was a way out. The burden of the law was taken away in Jesus Christ. He fulfilled all of that. That doesn't mean there are no rules and that grace is the only thing. <clears throat> God forbid. There is definitely still obedience required of us as believers in Jesus Christ. And our New Testament makes that explicitly plain and clear. <clears throat> so maybe that explanation was good for some of you. Maybe it wasn't good for any of you. I hope it was good for some of you. I'm still on this journey as well. I'm still searching these things out. <clears throat> and I've come to believe in the goodness of my God because he did come for me. He did die for me. And he rose again and extended that nail-scarred hand to me. If what I've said has convicted you in your heart and, you believe, and you, you're willing to acknowledge that you are a sinner, I've got some good news. God wants to extend his hand to you and he wants to take away all that wrath and all that judgment right now. If you will believe that he did die for you and that he did rise from the dead, God will save you from all that judgment and all that wrath right now. And if you want a prayer model to follow, if you just want someone to kind of like give you a, some way to lead the way, I'm going to pray. Just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I come to you knowing that I don't deserve a thing you did for me. But I thank you for it. I believe that you died on the cross, shedding your blood to forgive me of my sins. And I believe that you rose again on the third day, guaranteeing me eternal life with you in heaven. I believe on you now, Lord Jesus, as my Lord, my God, and my Savior. Please help me to love you like you've loved me and help me to obey you like I've just heard. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And if you did pray that prayer, then the fierceness of God's wrath has been turned away from you. There is no condemnation for those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You were in death. You were in darkness. You were a slave to sin. Now you are in his kingdom of light. You are filled with his life, and you are now a part of the new creation, and you have inherited eternal life with him forever. If you've just done that, my personal congratulations to you. My heart goes out to you. Welcome to the family of God. <clears throat> and that's the main purpose behind this whole YouTube channel and all these videos that someone will hear and someone will believe, and that everyone will, who hears these will be given a chance to get all this judgment behind them and to walk forward and live a new life in Jesus Christ. There is a lot of cursing, there is a lot of negativity that can be had. And, I th and I'll even go a step further to say, I think some of you guys understand, you deserve what's coming to you. But Jesus came to take away all that, and it's never too late. If at some point later on, past this video, you remember it in some deep, dark spot, and you're just like, man, I really wish I'd listened to that guy at the time when I heard it. You can listen then. It's never too late. Accept Jesus whenever that conviction hits you and you realize you need him. He's right there for you. Please don't put it off. As soon as you understand that this is right and this is for you and that this is true, it's not too late. God's love hasn't turned aside. It's not like you ignore this message and God's like, oh, that was his last chance or that was her last chance. Forget them. That was it. As long as as you care, as long as you want him, that's actually him calling out to you. Do not turn away from that. If you don't believe it now, but you do believe it later, it is not too late. He loves you. He always will. And the reason you're still here is because he is waiting for you. And he's giving you another chance. That's why you're here. And that's an extension of his long suffering and his grace and his mercy new to you every morning. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Thank you, Seth, for being here with me for your incredible contributions to this video as a whole. Much appreciated. Thank you. It wouldn't have been successful without me. It wouldn't have been at all. <laughs> I love you guys very much. 
if you liked it. I, I think I do this for my main Sunday videos. No, I haven't figured out my outros yet. I'm sorry. Go in the side the star. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you dislike this video, hit that dislike button. Christian or non-Christian alike. And let me know in the comments what was wrong and how I'm stupid and don't know what I'm talking about. If you really liked it, please share this video with someone, who, especially those who need to know the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Subscribe and join the freaks! I love you guys, and God bless.